Hello everybody, it's SCD Med Haven here today, and, well, hi. <laughs> I've been a bit more active the past couple of uh, weeks, haven't I? Um, I don't know about you guys, but if you look up at the uh, top right of the screen there, I've put a lot of time in the past week just grinding out silver. And I've had a lot of really good matches in that time, but this is the final match that I had for basically what's going to be considered this you know, entire week of a session for the last seven days, starting from Monday to today, and tomorrow's going to be the reset. We're going to be losing the tier 8 silver, silver bonus. So, last match, the final one, and it turned out really good. It was my first match today, and after I played it, I didn't even play another. I just went, took my shower, you know, so fresh, so clean. And the one thing that I actually want to focus on today is talking about the MVP screens. The top three specifically. I think it is the most useless thing to have in the game. It's it's a cool concept. Don't get me wrong. It's a pretty cool concept. But it, it turns the team against itself. Um, me, I like to look at people and congratulate them on things that they do. And tell them, hey, man, you made the difference this match. I hope you feel freaking good about that. You know, because to me, that that's what it is. You got people who are going to be making a difference, and those who... Maybe not. But the MVP score screen, it just makes 1 versus 29 rather than 15 versus 15. You know, me, I don't care if I end up on that MVP score screen, but somehow I do ev almost every other game or multiple games in a row. Um, especially Tier 8s with the experience bonuses that they get. You're going to be consistently hitting that MVP. So, it's kind of an unfair advantage because if you're in a lower tier and you know how to play that lower tier you have to do barely anything to get that mvp or top three slot like three four shots against tier tens and suddenly you're mvp so there is that i think that the mvp concept in the entire game is a little bit dumb uh, up next let's go ahead and start this replay um let's also talk about consumables i'm gonna drop this consumables i hate the fact that We've got these perks in game that we can't even use because of consumables. Um, supply reconversion, it's it feels useless. We've already got a really fast recharge to begin with on these consumables, a one minute recharge. And a 15% reduction, what's the benefit? Well, I'll tell you where the benefit would come from. If we were to take the standard consumables, remove the ability that they have, like 10% repair, 10% crew survival chance, Remove them outright. Get rid of their abilities. Period. Because that's the entire reason why they're not reusable, because they apply bonuses. Well, I would rather have those things on a 90 second cooldown timer than have 10% extra repair. Being able to use it multiple times throughout the match would make them a lot more beneficial, even if it's at an increased wait time and you don't benefit from it. The premium consumables, we have benefits. Yeah. Let's keep those benefits, leave them the way that they are. Final thing is supply reconversion would actually be useless and not considered a premium perk. In my opinion, I see that perk as a premium perk. It would be nice to see that changed. Alrighty, so right here, keeping track of the match, there are three artilleries on the enemy team. Two tier 6s, a tier 8. The last thing I want to do is I'm keeping track of where all the fire is coming from from artillery, so I'm actually going to back up a little bit. We're going to put a side shot into the stockade. And this right here, just working the mountain to stay out of the view of artillery. Right here, I did actually have a shot, but I never did take it because it just felt like a really uncomfortable one. So what I did here was I pulled up a little bit, propped myself up a little bit higher to actually get myself on top of him, being able to get a side armor and guarantee the penetration rather than trying to hit the turret. Keeping the, the uh, VZ-41, well, 40, VZ-44-1 alive. You guys can tell that I'm on track today. Up behind us, we got a T-41E1 down there. Krath Panther. Let's actually go ahead and break away from me right here. Because primarily, this is going to be a replay based upon what we see on the map currently. The backside, we got an LTB and then a KV-3 down in that ditch. And he has got four tanks on him right now. Looking at it from this point of view, I do believe the only people we can see are the ones that are spotted. So that is a little bit nice to know. I think I've already backed off. I started the fall back right here. So my goal for this was to back off completely. 
and there's one thing I really do enjoy about this. At the very start of the match, I did have someone following me. And this person that was following me, I actually don't see him because of the replay glitches that have been going on. There's always a glitch on the replay system. But at this point, I'm trying to take a different approach to the situation because I don't want to get stuck up on the hill section over here. Because this is just how you get caught out. This is a really fast way to die. And there he is. He gets detected right there. Deadeye6754. This guy, in my opinion, is definitely an MVP above MVPs. Um, his play may seem stupid to some people watching what he does. But in all reality, he allowed me to be able to engage multiple targets off into the distance. So, so far the KV-3 is actually locked down over there and cannot move anywhere. Deadeye here decides to push up and he spots out the SU-100 and he spots out everything that's up there. And rather than that, I call out ready to fire right here on the uh, right side of the screen. Call it out. I start backing up because I see what Deadeye is doing. He is lighting up every single person in that area. First shot down, AMX AC-48 taken down. You know, evening out the playing field 10 to 10. Taking my time here off in the distance. We got in a mill one that we're firing at. I have a view of the side. Kind of sucks that the targeting system actually doesn't work whenever you actually zoom in like this. But right here, second shell missed because the Emil did drop down. But lucky for me, the T95 E2 dead, I was able to take him down. Taking my time. And there we go. Managed to overmatch the side armor of that little guy off in the distance there. But dead eyes play made it to where I was able to fire at every single tank on top of this hill and allowed me to take down two of them. So we took down two TDs. I do believe that the AMX, that is a tier 8, and then the SU-100 is only a tier 6, but the fact is, it is still a TD, and it's still devastating because it does have high pin. I do want to say 217 on the higher end, which my armor, that'd be very easy to go through. So now let's go ahead and continue here. So already it's 7 versus 8, 6 versus 8. I'm just trying to think about how I want to position myself. And the best thing I can do is try and get cross shots coming down the side to try and support what artillery we do have left. Because people like to focus that artillery a little bit. So the best bet would actually be to take on those trying to push the artillery. So far we've got a Dreadnought, 660. There's a lot of hit points heading down that way. A decent amount. They're all... Two shots, a possible one shot for the MX-5100. But the Dreadnought pulling out, my goal is to take my time. He decides to back up off in the distance there. So, let's go ahead. Fire, there we go. 397 that looked like. Kind of hard to tell because of uh, the camera jerk. Sorry, I didn't record this one live. It would have been a lot nicer if it was live. But, there we go. Putting another one down. Taking the Dreadnought down through a cut in the mountain where I was able to see him. Now, this position, it's not a bad position. This position actually would not work if it wasn't for that KV-3 keeping that um, medium off in the distance occupied. Honestly, this is a full team effort. But right here, the Amex 5100, let's go ahead, take our time. And I actually missed the opportunity to be able to take him down. But right here, I was a little bit more focused on the Dreadnought because I did get shot from across the way. Ricocheting the Dreadnought off at the top plate. Off in the distance, got the MX-5100. We're ricocheting him as well. Take our time. There we go. Taking down the T-41E1. And right here, just limiting the amount that I am exposed to the enemies. Because you don't want to overexpose to allow three guns to be on you. You just want to be able to pull out enough to where, to where only one gun is able to focus on you at a time. From this position, I'm actually pretty hard to hit. But from that point of view, the only thing that could see me was the T-41E1. The Dreadnought stuck around the corner waiting on reloads. And then the MX-5100 is just trying to do a clip out off in the distance. So right here, this is one of the mistakes the Dreadnought make. Not knowing how fast the Bison can reload. And aiming straight for the tracks and panicking, allowing me to take him down. Taking a scenario from an 8 versus 2 down to a 2 versus 4. And immediately after... Let's go ahead and jump over to the KV-3, who decided to push, knowing that the backside was clear, and he took down the P-43 Biss. 
and now let's just fast forward a little bit because it's artillery sometimes it takes a minute to hunt them down but this replay the things I wanted to show was there are things that people do that can make a dramatic difference in a game that looks like it's going to be a loss along with that positioning and knowing how to use your teammates and use what they do to the advantage in my eyes Deadeye, that was in the T95E2, was the true MVP of this match. Simply put, just because of what he did to push forward and take control of that situation. Ending up with 8 kills, 4,570 damage, the Bison T103. Probably one of my more favorite tier 8s that there is inside the game. Just because it has one of the best AP penetrating premium rounds in the game. Yet, they have it mislabeled as APCR. Um, it's not APCR. It's definitely an AP run. Alright, let's go ahead and BM up it here. Start, profile, jump down. There we go. Most recent match played. Made 498,000 silver off of this match. You know, I, have, I had a lot of matches over the past couple of days, especially on Friday. Friday, the, during the time that they announced... Um, the next season and who made the most silver I had matches that absolutely trumped those people like we're talking 600,000 I had one match inside the bison 600,000 I had one match in the ISU 152k that was over 540,000 and then I had three matches in the uh, Caliban that were over 500,000 yet they never called me out on the uh, weekly announcements but that's okay I know that they tried to avoid me like the plague but that's fine with me I, I have you guys to, you know, congrats that income, because it was stupid amounts. By the way, during the time that you guys are playing this, I hope that you used big guns, big alpha, cheap rounds, because that was the best way to make the most silver. That's why I played the Bison. Its standard rounds were really cheap, and they had good penetration. So, up, we got a Pasucci's Medal, Reaper, Devastator, Mastery Badge, Radley Walters, Bruiser, Fire for Effect, Top Gun, Shellproof, High Caliber. And I'm on my way to my third mark of excellence inside this tank. I'm really close. I actually should just start grinding this thing out tonight whenever I get home. And then to the scoreboard. Keep in mind, in my eyes, Deadeye was a fantastic player. Far more deserving of MVP than me. Simply because of the fact that he pushed out to sacrifice himself to scout out the TDs off in the distance and the Emil. Making them... You know, because they were overconfident, celebrating a little bit too early, thinking that they had the win in the bag, and then getting taken down. Deadeye, absolutely fantastic. If you watch my content, I just want you to know, you were truly the MVP inside that match. And for anyone who wants to say otherwise, I even took my time out to send him a message saying, thanks for the support, you are the MVP for that help. Because he was. Absolutely standout perfect. So... Other than that, you guys, Bison, seriously, one of, in my opinion, one of the strongest tier 8 TDs in the game. I don't care what anyone says. Don't get me wrong. The Scorpion's a fantastic tank, and I doubt that I have any of my Scorpion matches still on the list, because I would be surprised if it was. Rumta, no, Iron Rain. I did play a little bit of the Iron Rain, because it just sounded fun to play. Bat Chat, T44. Okay. Well, Borask. Um, I also had a match yesterday inside of the brain fart of brain farts, because that's just how it goes. Just massive brain farts. Inside the Scorpion G as, oh my gosh, these are tiny. Which one was it? Is there two or just one? I think there's just one. I think it's this one. Yeah, just this one. There you go. I had one match yesterday inside the Scorpion G that was just awesome. 6,000 damage dealt. It was a really cool game. Also, it was in a position on... I can't remember the name of the map, actually. I think it's on there. Uh, on Dragon Ridge. Yeah, there you go. Dragon Ridge. There's a, If you go to the far left side of the map, there's a spot that you can kind of pull up and over consistently to get cross shots and enemies trying to pull around the side. I can't remember the exact map locations, but... It's there, and I'll probably show it off in a later video, or maybe I already did show it off in the AMBT review. I do believe it might be inside the AMBT review. Other than that, you guys, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. 
Deadeye, you were a fantastic player inside that match, and truly thank you for jumping in and sacrificing your hit points to allow me to get the shots across the map to help us guarantee and secure a win, rather than ending up in a really awkward crossfire, which is what was bound to happen if Deadeye did not make that push to allow his TD in the background to take care of the opposition. That would have caused a crossfire. Other than that, you guys have a great day, afternoon, night, whatever time that you are catching this. And also, final, final, last thing. Something tells me the Caliban's not going to be disappearing this Tuesday. Or maybe a new premium take might get added into uh, World War II. Sadly, I can't do anything about PlayStation, but I can do this for Xbox. Coming on Wednesday, I want to know who made the most silver. If you guys have a screenshot that you can send me to my Xbox account, specifically SOD Mad Haven, okay, send it to me and let me see the amount of silver that you guys made. I want to know how much silver you guys made. And whoever takes top and pinnacle of it, I will gift you whatever tank comes out Tuesday. It'll have to be on a Wednesday, though. Um... Only one person can get this. Xbox only. You guys, take your time. Send me those screenshots. I want to see how much silver you made out of a single match. Other than that, you guys have a great time. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. I'm going to go slack off and uh, want to pass out. I've been running off five hours of sleep now every single day for the past, like, month because of rotations. Yeah, it's a good time. I may be wrong, but I doubt it.